right, this is uh, Lewis Structures 6.02 Part 2. So we are doing Part 2 of uh, 602. And we just left off with uh, the fifth rule that carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen can form multiple bonds. They can share two pairs of electrons or three pairs of electrons. So we're going to go with example three. Example number three. What if we wanted to look at a covalent bond between two sulfur atoms and one carbon? What's that going to look like? Well, if you remember, rule number three is we have to do a skeleton structure and the least electronegative element is central. So when I look at that, uh, remember, electronegativity increases as I go uh, up the table and um, over. So if I look at carbon and I look at sulfur, yes, carbon is above, but sulfur is two over this direction. So sulfur actually has a higher electronegativity than carbon. <coughs> Another good rule of thumb is usually if you have carbon, carbon tends to be central. So I am going to uh, put my carbon in the middle. And I'm going to put my sulfur on either side. We're going to start like that. Uh, rule number four is that electrons in the structure can't exceed the maximum. So I need to know what my maximum is. I've got one carbon and I've got salt. Let's see, one and two. Carbon has four valence electrons and sulfur has six. So this is going to be 12 and that's going to be four. So I have a total allowed elect um, of electrons of 16. So here we go. I go 2, 4, 6, 8, 12, or 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. Okay, so I'm good on rule number four that I have 16 electrons, but I have... Um, now I have to check for rule number one. So rule number one is that every structure has to have an octet. And if I look at sulfur, I'm okay here. I've got two, four, six, eight. And over here, I've got two, four, six, eight. But look at my carbon in the middle. Uh-oh, I've got a problem. This does not meet rule number one. It only has four electrons. Well, this is where rule number five comes in, where carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen can form multiple bonds. And so what carbon's going to do, think of that central atom as kind of being an electron cowboy. It's going to throw up a lasso, and it's going to pull more electrons down to share more electrons. So now we've got carbon, and it's going to have two pairs of electrons between it. And then we've got sulfur. And over here, I've got sulfur. Okay, so do I still have 16 electrons? Two, four, six, eight, yes. 10, 12, 14, 16, sorry, yes. Sulfur has an octet. This sulfur has an octet, two, four, six, eight, but carbon only has two, four, six. So carbon is still not satisfied. So it's got to lasso up another pair. It's gonna pull this pair of electrons down. Now I have carbon has got two pairs on each side. I've got my sulfur and we usually like to put the electrons kind of far apart. So do I have 16 electrons? Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. Yes. Does this have eight electrons? Two, four, six, eight. Yes. How about this guy? Two, four, six, eight. Yes. And carbon now has two, four, six, eight. So my final structure when I replace my bonding electrons with dashes looks like this. This satisfies both rule number one and rule number four, but that's why it emphasizes why it's so important for you to always check and see that you've satisfied both the laws. You have to have total electron count and you have to have an octet. So this is the final structure for sulfur and carbon. Again, to review what we looked at in this uh, example, we have two, four, and now I count these dashes as two. So I have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. 
and I have to check for octet. Sulfur has two, four, six, eight. Sulfur has two, four, six, eight. Carbon has two, four, six, eight. So this is a good Lewis structure. All right, I'm gonna pause the video while I change the page. <clears throat> okay, we have, uh, so you have probably flipped to the next page in your um, packet. And we're looking at Lewis structures continued. So there's actually gonna be three videos over this. Uh, the next one, so we're gonna do example four here. And example four is a compound called cyanide. And yeah, it's a cyanide you're thinking of where uh, that's, it's the poison. It actually stops the electron transport chain and uh, we can't make ATP. So uh, cyanide is uh, one carbon and one nitrogen, but we've got something special going on here. So look at this negative one charge. Sometimes we have situations where a covalent compound a covalent compound will uh, pick up or drop electrons. And the result is the whole molecule has a charge. So the whole molecule acts like an ion. So we call this a polyatomic ion. Because uh, it's not a monoatomic ion where we have uh, like chloride that has a minus one charge or sodium that has a plus one charge. Here you've got a whole molecule. And let me just say that again. There's a whole molecule and we either pick up or we drop electrons. And that's what's happened here. So before we do too much with this, let's look at what this Lewis structure looks like. So I have two atoms, so I don't really have to worry about my skeleton structure. I've got a cyanide and I've got a nitrogen. I'm sorry, I've got a carbon and I've got a nitrogen. Carbon has four valence electrons and nitrogen has five. So that's a total of nine valence electrons. But look at this guy. He has a minus one charge. So that means that in addition to my nine valence electrons, I picked up an extra. So when I look at my total allowable electrons, I have four from carbon, I have five from nitrogen, and I have one extra. So my total valence electrons here are 10. So let's go ahead and apply those. And I'm going to go. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Okay, so rule number four is uh, satisfied where I have 10 valence electrons, but when I check for rule number one, two, four, six, eight, this guy has an octet, but carbon only has four. So I'm going to have to bring two pairs of electrons down to share. This guy needs four more electrons. So let's see what happens. I've got my carbon, I've got my nitrogen. And what if we share? So we're actually sharing three pairs of electrons. Can we do that? Yeah, carbon and nitrogen can, so can oxygen. Okay, I need 10 electrons, let's do a check. Two, four, six, eight, 10, that's good. Does carbon have an octet? Two, four, six, eight, 10. Does nitrogen have an octet? Two, four, six, Eight, yes. So when I draw this Lewis structure, I'm gonna go like this, but because it's a polyatomic ion, I have to put the whole thing in brackets and I have to put the charge outside the brackets. So that's something extra we have to add. All right, so you'll have an assignment. Each one of these videos has a different assignment that goes with it. So you'll be doing assignment today that has polyatomic ions in it and then uh, it has multiple bonds. So the next lesson and the last one for Lewis structures is something called a resonance structure, but that's all for part two. Thanks for watching.